I'm Mary Ann Croce uh, from Norwalk, Connecticut, and my business is Croce's Transmission Specialists. Perfect. Um, I'm excited to talk to you because you're one of those uh, brick and mortar businesses uh, that has some serious hard costs to things. And uh, But before we kind of get into uh, that business, I'd love to know how Marianne, and I know you do your business with your husband, um, got to this place um, of owning uh, your uh, mechanic auto body shop. Well, my husband was a technician for years. I used to tease him and tell him that uh, tranny fluid was in his veins <laughs> <laughs> because he just he just loved it. And uh, he grew up as a kid and was always tinkering with things and then ended up going to school for it. Yeah. So how we ended up owning the business was Tony worked for a current, um, an owner of a shop Yeah. and uh, for years. And we wanted to venture out and go and create our own business. So we were looking. And at that time, what he found was he worked for a franchise. Yeah. Wanted to go and see the independent side to get a better idea. Yeah. So we ended up, he ended up working at a place for about three years and uh, the owner approached us and asked if we wanted to, asked Tony if he wanted to buy. Yeah. Uh, and we decided that we did, but we didn't want to keep the uh, franchise. Yeah. We wanted to go on our own. We went and we interviewed them and it wasn't a good fit. So we wanted to go on our own. So long and short of it is he needed help with the business side of the business. Yeah. So that's where I came in gotcha. and uh, we uh, opened Croches in 99. So you've been in business now for 16 years, is it? Yes. 16 years. And um, what was that first few years of owning that business like for you guys? Um, it was definitely overwhelm. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot to the business. And he would say that uh, the technical side, which he was really comfortable with, yeah. that was in his comfort zone. The business side of the business is what he would have struggled with if he didn't have a partner. Yeah. And my side, my um, experience was in banking and customer service. Yeah. So before I stayed home with my kids, I was in more of a corporate world. Yeah. And so that part of it, it blended, it meshed, and it, it worked well for us. So you, you made a good team. Um, you uh, you blended well together with your skill sets. And then what was it, where were you at at the end of 2014 that you were, that caused you to click on an email or see these videos with um, this ugly mug on them? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the point that I was at, the, the best way to sum it up was really frustrated. I mean, I felt very blessed to be in business for, you know, 15 years at that time and really blessed to have the team that we had because yeah. they're a caring team, but I couldn't get out of my own way. I had to control everything mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was in overwhelm. Uh, so I think that a lot of small business owners struggle with that, yeah. letting go, delegating. And I knew I needed the tools to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So it just resonated me. Everything in the videos and the, you know, the emails really hit home with me yeah. and it sounded like this is something that I need. I need that roadmap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, so you dive in and what's been your experience like over the last 90 days? It's been awesome. <laughs> um, the clarity is just, um, it, it was overwhelming at times, the clarity. And when you say clarity, like, what do you mean? What I mean is taking a step back and instead of doing all the tasks that you do every day, you're able to take a step back and look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. So when you can take a step back and look at the big picture of where your business is going yeah. and how you want to get there, all of a sudden clarity came to me where, okay, now I know exactly what I need to do yeah. to get there. And, you know, the program just really spelled that all out. Yeah. So, so, I mean, it, it, relieves a lot of the friction that was typically there because now you're working on things that are actually producing a result that you know is important to the type or to the um to the place of business that you're at and when you see those results 
yeah. the the amazing thing that happens is it builds that momentum yeah. because you have that confidence to go get get past the next hurdle. <laughs> yeah. So then, okay, so clarity is important, but what has that actually meant to the business? Like whether it's numbers or, or whatever it could be. I mean, we know that, you know, I talk about all the time, business is about people, process, and product. So, it, you know, what? how did it impact any of those three areas? So how it, have to, how it impacted the business was in a number of different ways. Um, I had just actually had a new hire right when I started the program. Yeah. So that gave me a lot of direction on what I could delegate. Mm. So that took a lot off my plate. Then what we did was we started changing the way we looked at our marketing. Mm -hmm. And we looked at that much broader and bigger. You know, who was our customer? And how were they? How were we best serving them? Yeah. So that really changed up and ramped up our marketing. The other thing I noticed was I had a lot on accounts receivable at the time, and it gave me clarity on that. So I put systems and procedures into place to clean all of that up. Great. And now going forward, I've got the cash flow now. Mm, yeah. So. Yeah, and I mean. What... I've, I've mentioned this before inside, uh, w whether it's in the community or during the support sessions, that sometimes it's not um, it's not for a lack of revenue or that not enough for or a lack of demand on a business that it ends up failing. It's just the operations part of it that accounts receivables ends up breaking a business. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes it's even, you know, the reality is there's been businesses that have been broken because they actually grew way too fast, which is surprising to many people because they would love to have that as a problem. But um, growing too fast can implode uh, the operations and process part of things if you don't have the support structure for it. Uh, yeah. So that's great. And I know that you're the one who really kind of worked through the uh, worked through the program. But how did it affect your husband? Um, how it affected my husband? We do do some uh, training with associations that we belong to yeah. in the automotive industry. And my change in my mindset, my shift the confidence yeah. and because I validated different things that I was going to do and proceed yeah. with, yeah. it was a huge change. And I noticed the change in him yeah. when he picked up on that in me yeah. and uh, he was more attentive and all of these, you know, attentive in all these classes. And uh, it was just really, we're on the same page. Great. I think that's a huge thing, mm -hmm. especially with a family business. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. When you come home, you can bring a lot of that home with you. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of entrepreneurs, it's 24-7. They don't have regular nine-to-five hours. Yeah. Um, and it we, we have work-life balance now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a farm kid. So you, on a farm and ranch, you are you live there, you work there. I mean, it's it's a 24-7 thing you're surrounded by. You hear cows moving and chickens clucking and all those. I mean, it's yeah. just, it just is what it is. So, I mean, I was lucky that I had two parents that were on the same page. Um, so it's great to hear that, you know, you and your husband have that same sort of vision as well going forward too. Um, anything that kind of surprised you about the program that you weren't expecting to get out of it, but you did get out of it. Yes. Being a brick and mortar, I went in with an idea for myself getting some direction, Yeah. but I didn't, but I thought mainly that this was going to be more of an online business type class. Okay. And I got so much more out of it than I thought I would. Yeah. Which was very surprising to me. It made me look at my business even as a brick and mortar. The marketing um, is online today. Yeah. Your website is online. Your reputation, your branding, a lot of that is online. So even though you are a brick and mortar, there is so much of your business that is online. So it really gave me a different way, a perspective of looking at it. Mm -hmm. And all of these lessons, all of these sessions that we went through apply to any business, whether you're online or you are a brick and mortar. Yeah. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's one thing. I mean, I've said it in the past interviews already. So, uh, but it's, you know, foundational principles are foundational principles. It, it doesn't matter. And I mean, we had, I think when we did the, uh, the audit, I think we had 53 different industries or types of businesses, you know, whether it's pizza shop owners, whether it's auto body, yeah. whether it's coaches or consultants, or whether it's e-commerce, uh, whether it's, you know, we have um, web startups like, you know, applications in it. We've, we've got someone who's building out game, uh, like games for iPhones and things. So it's, it doesn't, and I mean, at, 
we're, I'm also talking to people about their personal performance as well. So, so then when we talk about, um, I'd love to find out from you too, what are maybe three words that you'd use to describe this program? Well, to sum it up in three words, um, yeah. to me, the first thing that comes to my mind is the real deal. <laughs> It's the real deal, and what I mean by that. So this is, is what this is why I like talking to people who are brick and mortar. They are um, auto body artists. I, I always love the because it's it, it. I mean, it's just it's real verbiage. So it's we're we're just just to clarify, we're automotive, but we're a transmission shop. Okay, gotcha. Okay, great. <laughs> just just okay. So um, anyway, what I mean by that when I say the real deal is, you know, there's a lot out there with fluff to it. Yeah. <laughs> But that what I think of is is when I when I first went into the first session, started with the first session, and even before um, the emails that came in, what I what resonated with me was that you were very genuine. You're mm-hmm. you're the same way when we did the meetup as you are, you know, in the videos as you were with you know Melanie and Devin. It it's just you're very very genuine Mm -hmm. and that's refreshing because to me it was you really want your clients to succeed you care about them and so that was huge and the program it's a combo i mean you get you you get the program and the the other thing that i would say was the credibility um you you've gone through it you share so many of your experiences what you've learned Mm -hmm. Also, from your group, from other uh, sessions or experiences that you had coaching, so that part of it is was very impressed me, and it was really it was it resonated with me. Um, the last thing I would say is probably action, because you take action in the group. There's a lot of unexpected things, bonuses that come in that were very surprising, and it causes. The, the people that take the course, like myself, I mm-hmm. really, there was no reason for me not to take action. It really got me pumped up. And yeah, uh, yeah I. Yeah. Well, I mean, if there was one thing that I cared about getting people getting out of the program was that if at the end of it, they were just better action takers. Um, mm-hmm. And whether if he was in, and, and whether it was good action or bad action, I, I don't really care because um, so long as we don't repeat the bad action all the time, but the way that the actual 90 day year is structured, the bad action shouldn't be showing up again because of the framework that we use for it. Um, but you know, I want people to learn. You don't learn by just sitting there and watching other people do it. This wasn't a passive program. That's why there wasn't, you know, hours and hours and hours of videos in there. Um, the only hours and hours of videos that were in there afterwards was the maybe watching the support sessions, but that was all about taking action. Right. So, um, no, I love that feedback. That's great. Um, and you know, is there any business that you think that, or person you don't think that this would be right for? Um, the, the only, the only person that this wouldn't be right for is someone that is, is not going to take any action that Mm -hmm. thinks, you know, things are just going to happen on their own. Um, this, this is definitely a class for that business owner that is ready to, um, take their business to the next level and to get that clarity, you know, have that work-life balance. They have to focus on what it is that they want out of life. And in this course will help them, you know, get that work-life balance and get them there. But yeah, if you're just going to, you know, kind of sit on your butt and not do anything. Yeah. Um, no, then that that's, those are the only people I think it's not other than that. It's, it's for everyone else. Um, is there anything that uh, I haven't asked that I should have asked or that you would like to add? Um, well, the, the one thing that really resonated with me or I found that really worked out well with the class, well, two things. One was the fact that I think the timing was perfect in the sense that we had our sessions and then we, d- we did the work. I thought the time was great because you could do it on your own, no matter what your schedule was. So that was really a good part of it. And it gave you accountability because you knew that next session was coming up. So that was awesome. Um, It kind of put a fire under, you know, certain things, which was great. And the, um, the other thing was the support within the group. 
Um, I was so impressed with the, the, the high caliber people, the giving people mm -hmm. that were in that group. Yeah. I, it was amazing. Yeah. And I, yeah, I can't say enough about that as well, but I guess those were the people that you attracted. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I want, I mean, I like having smart doers that are, you know, that's who I typically try to hang out with myself. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you put it out there and you, you hope that you get that right quality type of individual, someone who's, um, ambitious, doesn't say that they're ambitious, but actually is ambitious, which gets me to another question, I guess, is has, have your ambitions changed at all? Like, is there anything that you're excited about maybe, um, launching or, you know, progressing to in the future here? Yeah, we have a couple of things that we're, um, in the middle of doing right now. One of the things that, um, I'm excited about is, I'm putting together, and this has been on the back burner, I'm putting together my operations manual for my mm -hmm. business. Um, I started it a while ago and kind of put it on the back burner. But now with this 90-day uh, program and that clarity yeah. um, of it, then that really was huge for me. So I'm putting, I'm working on that right now and putting that operations manual together. Great, great. Um, well, Marianne, I super appreciate all the, uh, you know, the effort and taking the time out to uh, share your kind of backstory and your experience of the program. And uh, hope you have a fantastic day in Connecticut. Yeah, you as well. And I'm looking forward to the next 90. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> well, continued success, Todd. Thank you.